exactly three minutes past the hour of 11. A good way to welcome you to the issues, that program where we tend to talk about healthy conversations every Thursday. And of course, this is in line with the General Hospital Week, Korodu, uh, where together we do this. Uh, today, I should let you know that there is an awareness all over the world and talk about this world awareness is in line with this deadly disease called hepatitis now however uh, the world health organization has decided to set aside uh, this weekly awareness uh, to orientate the public on how deadly hepatitis uh, could be uh, so when we talk about hepatitis hepatitis is one of uh, a liver problem uh, that could lead to various health problems that is if care is not taken and if not properly uh, handled however that is why we have this conversation today on the issues where we'll talk about this deadly disease called hepatitis so there is an awareness just like i said earlier and this awareness is uh, for the world hepatitis week which actually has begun already and that is why we would also have the conversation today on the issues you can join this conversation from anywhere all over the world via our website www.ikd 1061fm Dot ng. We are also available on Radio Garden, IKD 1061 FM. My name is Okpayemi Adebambo. I'll be your anchor for today. And I'm not doing it, I'm not doing this alone. I have my guest also in the studio, uh, a known uh, uh, medical practitioner. As a matter of fact, she happens to be uh, 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 Dr. Jetunde Odusolu, public health physician, general hospital, Ikorodu. Together, we would have a conversation and create a proper awareness uh, to not just the people in Ikorodu, but to Lagos at large. One more time, I say good morning and welcome to the issues. A very short breather would suffice. When I return, we get talking. Oh, yes, you're welcome back to the issues on IKD 106.1 FM. Awareness of a World Hepatitis Week, uh, popularly known as WHD, is already all over the world going on. And of course, we are also part of this awareness in line with General Hospital Ikorudu. And that is why I said earlier that we have a guest in the studio, a medical practitioner in person of Dr. Yetunde Odusolo. Doctor, good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. It's good to have you again. Thank you. Thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, that is the voice of uh, Dr. Odusolu, Public Health Physician, General Hospital, Ikorodu. And of course, today, uh, our, our conversation will boil down to this deadly disease called uh, hepatitis. But before we even start talking about this deadly disease, let's talk about the week that has been set aside, the WHD week. Now, tell us uh, why the establishment of this week what brought about uh, the uh, uh, awareness? Why do we have this World Hepatitis Week? Well, uh, thank you. The World Hepatitis Week is a week that is uh, marked all over the world, you know, to celebrate hepatitis. Hepatitis is a deadly uh, infection mm. and because it, it is responsible for about maybe affecting almost 2.3 billion of the world population mm. so we can see the enormity of uh, the disease so we need to bring it to our owners and it's also a silent killer mm. just like we have some of the other diseases like hypertension so we need to bring uh, awareness of people to this disease because when people don't even know that they have it mm. they don't know that they are carriers and they keep on spreading the disease so this week is set outside the door for us to know that you know to sensitize people to bring the awareness to hepatitis infection and also to make bodies you know and maybe stakeholders you know to be more committed you know mm. politically funding investment so that we can eliminate hepatitis mm. that's the that's the essence for establishing mm. this week yeah. uh, that has already begun if i'm not mistaken i think july 20th yes. uh, every every month of mm. july in every year is a day set aside for uh, this awareness and i like the fact that you mentioned that uh, hepatitis is one of these deadly diseases that a lot of people are not even aware of a lot of people do not even know that they carry uh, this deadly disease and it keeps going like that uh, it's not even surprising that some people would not even know what hepatitis is they would just tell you what, what disease is called hepatitis they're not even sure of it and this is very very bad because this is as deadly as any other disease we can think of so uh, for the benefit of those listening and of course for the benefit of those that are not even aware of what hepatitis is i know they are in different forms they are in different types before we go to the types the causes the effects and how it can be cured and all i want you to uh, explain to us well enough uh, in your own understanding how we also can understand what hepatitis is so what is hepatitis 
Hepatitis simply means inflammation of the liver. Help is a word, is a Greek word that is used to describe liver. Mm. Hepatitis means that there is an infection or inflammation occurring. Okay. So, in answer, hepatitis, that means there is an inflammation that is occurring, occurring. in the liver. It's like okay. an injury or an insult that is mm. occurring in the liver. So mm. that's what hepatitis means. Mm. So it, it's from a Greek word. Mm. Uh, is that to say that hepatitis began from Greek? <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes most of our English words, we mm. derive them from the Greek, you know, ep- True, true. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, hepatitis okay. is a combination of a Greek word mm. and when it occurs in uh, uh, the system. And of course, this happens with the liver. Yeah. Uh, is it is it also to say that it is only a liver problem or uh, sometimes it could be some other parts of the body or it's just strictly liver? Yeah, ep is for the liver. So, hepatitis okay. means it's affecting the liver. The liver, so the liver performs a lot of function in the body, mm. of course, which can manifest with so many other things, symptoms, signs and everything in the mm. body. But but F really means that there is an inflammation in the liver. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about the types because mm. I'm aware while uh, doing a little bit of research, I'm aware that there are types of hepatitis. It's not just a one type thing. There are different types of it. Uh, but then let's still go back to this awareness of this uh, day that has been set aside. We have some other deadly diseases aside hepatitis mm. that are not even uh, celebrated. And celebration in, in, in this context is not for good but to allow people know that you could uh, stay safe in a way or the other so i want to ask if hepatitis has been set aside uh, and recognized for every 28th of july now tell us when we look at our community is it to say that there is no proper awareness on hepatitis is it to say that uh, uh, because if something is done every year, my point is this, if something is done every year, last year it was recognized with a different theme, this year also it's been recognized. With it. Are people not still aware with, with your level of knowledge in this field? Do you still think people are not aware enough or this is just a doctrine that, okay, let's just follow it like every Christmas day or every layer day? Oh uh, yes, and um, people are not yet aware. Mm. Even though you know, like there's a special type of hepatitis that we call hepatitis B. We will say that out of the people that have the infection, mm. only twenty percent are just aware that they have the infection. So mm. we still need to b- b- maybe sensitize people, bring it, mo- um, bring up more awareness campaign, mm. so that people will be aware, so that they can get tested and you know and get themselves treated whatsoever way, mm. or and or for people to know how to prevent such infection so that they don't have it mm. okay. uh, let's 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 uh, uh brighten up this conversation with the theme for this year mm. uh, the theme for this year says uh one life one liver yeah <laughs> where's that coming from <laughs> 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 the liver is a very important organ in the body mm. and it's responsible for so many functions of the body in the body mm. first it helps it's, it's like a organ that helps infiltration Okay. It helps infiltrate, infiltrating, you know, the blood passes through the liver. Mm. So it filters so many things in the body. It also is also responsible for metabolism of so many mm. uh, metabolism in the body and detoxification in okay. the body. Mm. It, 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 the detoxifying organ helps the body to remove toxins from the body. It also helps in um, formation of some protein uh, mm. or, or some blood forming um, products. Mm. It is responsible for maybe for blood clotting in synthesizing some of those protein in the body. Mm. So the liver is a very essential organ in the body, mm-hmm. and if it is damaged or injured, it affects the processes in the body. Mm. So without yeah, so the that's liver, a, yeah, then we just so that's, a, that's life. what you yeah, that <laughs> that if your liver is gone, that mm. is the end. Mm. Mm. And so it's a one life, one liver. It's only, you know, there are some other organs in the body that your, the nature is very good that you are you're calling to. Yeah. You have two eyes, uh-huh. you have two ears, you options. have kidneys, maybe two kidneys. Yeah. But uh, this liver, because of the function. It does. It does only one Just organ. One. You, don't, you don't have a spare. Mm, mm-hmm. mm. And uh, okay, <laughs> I, I think I like the theme now. You made it even more interesting. <laughs> so it, this is also to uh, uh, let you mm. know out there, if you're listening, that uh, uh, the theme for this year's uh, awareness on the uh, appetites, the, the world appetites a uh, day is one life, 
one liver and as you've heard from the doctor uh, we have just one liver you cannot afford to uh, risk it unlike other organs of the body where you could have options unfortunately liver uh, does not leave you with any option today i want to accommodate enough calls and messages if possible where we can ask questions questions we've had this conversation sometimes ago and of course this is another uh, conversation in line with hepatitis so i would like for us to take in calls questions if possible and of course uh, text messages on our studio line 0904082 or 0904081 that is to call in or to send in text messages you can do that as much as you can today so we can have an understanding of this conversation the liver is very very important i must tell you uh, for a fact now uh, dr odusolu when we say the liver and this uh, deadly disease called hepatitis uh, i've been informed that i i made my research to see that there are types of them they are even in alphabets the abc and tell us the types of hepatitis and help us understand them one after the other okay thank you when we saw hepatitis hepatitis we can be broadly classify them into two you mm. can classify them as the non-infectious hepatitis Okay. and the infectious hepatitis okay non-infectious means that it is not true infection may be true some of the um safety organisms like maybe bacteria virus mm. or parasite or all those things so the non-infectious ones are it may be due to alcohol mm. uh, having alcohol too much ingestion of alcohol calling alcoholic hepatitis mm. you can also have it being due to uh, ingestion of some, of some toxins or drugs Mm. You know, they can affect damage the liver, causing inflammation, causing hepatitis. There's also an, also an uh, non-infectious hepatitis, we call it autoimmune hepatitis. That mm. means the body cells fighting against its own cells, you know, is an autoimmune condition. Mm. So it's like the cells in the body, they are fighting against the cells in the, in the liver too. Mm. So it's an autoimmune condition. Mm. So that one is also a classification of the non-infectious hepatitis. Mm. Then now to the common ones, that the ones that we are we are trying to, because of the uh, impact in the world, mm. the infectious hepatitis. Mm. We have uh, the hepatitis A, mm. B, C, D, E. Oh, no, there, yes. is, there is an E. Yes, there is an E. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. I thought it, it, it yeah. ended with D. No, there is an E too. So, oh. the, the hair and the E, yes. they are said to be due to uh, maybe when you take uh, to f- uh, fecal horror, when you eat or drink, you know, infected water, mm. that's where you can get the hepatitis E or the hepatitis E. Mm. The, and of course, they, don't, they may not last long in the body if they are you know they are curable mm. you know they don't produce they, they don't live to chronic liver disease condition okay. or like the other ones okay. then the hepatitis e is also said to be more severe even in pregnant women but it, of course they once you can diagnose them you can treat them mm. then we have the, the b the c and the d those are the ones that are the culprits that are responsible for majority of uh, hepatitis uh, infection all over the world mm. and that's where we are trying to bring awareness concerning those ones because they can lead to uh, later complications you know of liver damage and all all sorts so the b is uh, and the c and the d the, their mode of um, transmission is through blood or body mm. fluids mm. you know the other one i said is through f- food eating drinking water maybe bad hygiene and all those things that can result to the and the heat but these ones they are simply through blood mm. or body fluids that you can get them or let me just say that any means through which you know we know we talk about hiv mm. any way or means through which you can get hiv yes. is similar to the way which you can get the hepatitis b the c mm. and the d mm. yes mm. and the b and the, the hepatitis d he said it cannot exist to learn it has to exist with the b and wow. the c is also dangerous too <laughs> yes <laughs> So, so they are all intertwined to one yes, another. Yes, and the only, they are, of course, the means of transition is through blood, and when we say somebody may be through sex, mm. and, and when you have an unprotected sex, okay. or men that are having sex with the men, and, you know all those uh, people that they don't you know, take precautions, mm. and then of course through uh, using of sharp instruments like people that use razor blade you mm. know or people that do tattooing or people that do piercing mm. or do that do circumcision you know when you do all those things and you don't sterilize those instruments mm. somebody that is infected that use it and you are using it again you can mm. be infected or people that even inject drugs intravenous drug users mm. people can those it's also a way of getting 
yeah, the HIV. Mm. Or also, uh, sorry, the hepatitis B. Also, it can also be gotten through a uh, blood transfusion, organ mm-hmm. donation. You know, when you don't screen the blood, that is, you don't screen them properly. You know, before transfusing somebody with that needs blood, with uh, blood, mm. you place in the hepatitis B, can the C, they can be transmitted also through that means. Also, it can also be given from a mother to a child. You call perinatal transmission. Mm. That means the mother, you know, tr- during pregnancy, transfers this uh, hepatitis B, you know, to the child, to the unborn child. Mm. So, basically, all the ways that which you can get, get HIV is the ways that which you can get the they are, they are similar, to, they are one similar another. to each other yes. they are similar to each other yeah. okay uh, uh, before we even we we'll still talk about some of the causes mm. uh, well enough uh, I, I want us to talk about uh, this hepatitis in terms of uh, 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 contagious mm. you know some some diseases like uh, 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 which uh, okay let me use HIV just like you said uh, you could uh, contract through uh, someone so this time around for hepatitis is it also same i need to be sure on that particular question yes like i said it's same if you're having sex with somebody that has hepatitis b and mm. the sex is not protected that means the partners can transmit uh, mm. the, uh, the hepatitis b to each other mm. uh, so you can it's, it's, it's contagious in that in, in fact because you can be sexually transmitted even in, it has been classified as a form of sexually transmitted disease hepatitis mm. b mm. so if you if somebody has a cut and you know the person is affected or people or through clippers too people that use clippers you know mm. that way you have your own personal clipper have your own personal you know people that go to the salon have your own personal needle that you use all those means two people can get sharp instruments and there can be blood exposure to blood mm. and the exp- the blood the blood that you're exposed to has hepatitis mm. of course you can always contact hepatitis b mm. yeah but is this is this disease is also hereditary yeah, well it, it's not hereditary but mother can transmit it to the so child, to unborn child. Okay. yes it's not okay. if it's, the, it's so it, it can only occur from a parent to a child if it is a mother to a child yes mother to a child or you are living with somebody that has hepatitis and you are not taking proper precautions okay you know those people are also prone to having it people mm. that live in maybe a uh, prison people that inject drugs men mm. that have sex with men you know all those people are there are risk or people that are, work in an uh, environment where they are more exposure to blood like health workers mm. you know people that you know deal with blood surgeons nurses even people that even the cleaners lap attendants if they somebody has they have used a needle for somebody that has hepatitis and you give it for injet, else, okay. uh, uh, they can do it. I'm not even supposed to use it. Mm. Maybe you even got a uh, needle prick, you know. Okay. No, uh, so all those things you can get hepatitis B from. Okay, protein. if you're just joining us, it's uh, an awareness uh, for the world. Uh, this one is called a World uh, Hepatitis Day. Creating a proper awareness to every individual out there, letting us know that uh, hepatitis is a deadly disease, of course, that affects the liver. And of course, we could actually uh, stay away from this deadly disease. With me in the studio, like you already know, is Dr. Yetunde Odusolu, public health practitioner, physician, rather, uh, General Hospital Ikorodu. We're doing this together and I'm taking your calls and your text messages or WhatsApp messages on 0904. 082-1061 or 0904-081-1061. Going ahead with this conversation, doctor, uh, when we talk about hepatitis, there are some symptoms uh, at which uh, one will say that, okay, oh, this is hepatitis. What are some of these symptoms that uh, uh, people are to look out for? Maybe in themselves or people around them and they'll say, okay, I think this is what is wrong with you, young man. Maybe you should visit the hospital. What are some of the symptoms uh, that comes along with this deadly disease called hepatitis? Okay, thank you. Uh, some may be, uh, I would like, when you say something is pathognomonic, that means they think that something is definitely wrong with the, with the liver. Mm. If somebody has those signs or symptoms. Mm. But there are some that may not just be, they may be general. Like somebody having fever, person may have fatigue weakness but when you're not having along with all these things um, a person having nausea vomiting then abdominal pain the abdominal mm. pain is not located on maybe on the right side of the abdomen the mm. upper right side of the abdomen that's where the location of the liver is somebody that is passing mm. urine dark urine okay. then a person that is passing a stool the stool is now pale looking like clay Mm. you know the head, the head then somebody then also person may uh, this one that is now more 
that you is like tending more to say okay this is likely to be a liver infection mm. a person is having rash and is having itching then there's yellowness of the skin Hmm. and yellowness of the eyes the white part of the body of the eye becomes yellow hmm. then of course this points out that this person has maybe hepatitis infection hmm. mm-hmm. okay uh, uh, now now we know that hepatitis is a deadly disease hmm. and uh, if not taken care of it takes lives and it has taken a lot of lives i think you give the statistics uh, yes uh, every 30 seconds all over the world somebody dies of hepatitis every 30 in, seconds in, yes every 30 seconds yeah. that is that is so that means that means it's it's quick to to kill yeah. how long does hepatitis stay in the body exactly before well, it takes life it depends on the immune status of the person but usually they said there's a window period there's an even say for every infection there's a, what we call an incubation period mm. so it can be up to three months maybe 90 days before the first thing starts manifesting maybe be the signs of the infection and sometimes some people don't even know you know some, the, some, some people's immune system mm. you know is able to combat the infection you need know, to okay. overcome the infection maybe with time mm. but for people that you know they now it progresses mm. and there's you know it, may, it, it depends on the immune system of the person or the, of the of the individual, but it depends. On, the immune system will determine how how the disease will manifest mm. quickly in the person. But the incubation period is usually between, like, say, ninety days, maybe three months three for somebody months. that has the infection for it to be you know, for the liver to, to be manifest. affected and to start affecting. Yeah, different parts of the body to be feeling all those symptoms that I mentioned. Okay, so uh, aside aside uh, aside uh, the fact that uh, it's a liver problem, I am also aware that uh, hepatitis also spreads across to other diseases. It can actually bring some other diseases to the system. Yeah. Yeah. Wh- which are some of these diseases? Because uh, some people might just feel like since it's liver problem, that's where it ends. But I'm aware that it does not end there. It will still bring about other diseases and sickness to the body system. Uh, well, we may not say may not <laughs> bring diseases, <laughs> but it brings out some other manifestations. Oh, okay. Depending on how complicated it is, mm. because it can affect. Because you know, we are saying that it is a filtration organ. Mm. So, of course, when it is affected and the body is not able to, the liver is not able to function well again. Mm. Of course, there may be signs of toxic accumulation in the body. Then, of course, there may be uh, what we call. Um, it's a complication bleeding diastasis that the person will be bleeding mm. can be bleeding because the uh, the clotting factors the things that the livers are responsible for mm. you know you're not able to function well then also it's also responsible for controlling uh, cholesterol and hormones in the body mm. so the hormones in the body the cholesterol in the body they can go haywire okay. it can also go on to affect the brain wow. there, there, there's a, that's the end stage you know, you know maybe complication when you have got hepatic encephalopathy the person may be confused having mm. memory loss some of the who have loss of consciousness mm. so it can also affect the what the, the kidney there's a, a syndrome we call it hepatorenal syndrome once the liver is affected it goes back you know the kidney is also that is also a part of an organ that helps in filtration is also affected so the kidney mm. is also affected so it can lead to accumulation you know kidney also help to filter fluid from the body mm. accumulation of fluid in the body they can have fluid in the abdomen ascites mm. fluid around their ankles around their mm. legs you know the person may have puffiness you know so it means that it is manifesting other signs from the body because the kidney is also affected mm. so it's it, it, like it affects the whole body because mm. the liver functions in helping the in the body metabolism mm. so once the liver is affected it affects every you know you have so many other organs manifesting like that even the bile dots to so the globe bladder they, um, they may be affected so the person mm. that's why we have the yellowness of the eyes you know the because of the blue being the yellow thing in the body the skin and all those things so it comes across almost yes. every part of the body. Yes, uh, almost yes, every part yes, of the body. Yes. Uh, this is this is very serious. Uh, the liver is uh, 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 an internal uh, organ that cannot be seen, hmm. and of course, uh, 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 it's affected by uh, appetites that also cannot be seen. But the symptoms are uh, physically seen out there. And you talked about uh, uh, the blood, which is one of the major ways at which uh, one could actually contract this uh, uh, deadly disease. Aside the blood, I want to ask: Are there any other other ways at which I'm, I'm looking at how we can protect ourselves aside the blood are there any other means at which this thing could just come to anybody aside yeah. the blood because i know you were very emphatic with the blood you mentioned the blood it comes through the blood either you're babbing your hair uh, mismanagement of pain and all of those sharp objects aside the blood is there any other means and uh, the only means is through other body fluids Okay. Like the semen, vaginal fluids, or somebody, if somebody that has 
é hepatite B, you know, use it, you can you must not share those brush. Mm. Somebody that has hepatite B, you know, and the person you know bleeding or the gum during the course of mm. brushing and the virus is on it. It has been said that the virus can stay up to seven days on surfaces. So you can imagine the virus being on that toothbrush and somebody else using it. So you can also mm. get infected through those means. So but it's basically through exchange of fluids blood mm. body fluids you know that can lead to hepatitis infection the b o d b and the c that we're talking about okay the b and the c not uh, all of the, them uh, you know the a and e i say it's true fecal oral through yeah. food yes. through water you know we have we have a we have b we have c we have d mm. and we even have e mm. i wasn't even aware of the e mm. so all of these uh, types of hepatitis are they with the same symptoms you know you mentioned the symptoms the reaction the body system and all do they all have the same symptoms or the symptoms for a is different from b different from d or e the symptoms for the a and e is really related to the gastrointestinal touch because i think the best thing may have fever they may have not uh, vomiting diarrhea mm. because it's related to the you know to the git <laughs> so and those ones they, they, they usually run their course it's like acute mm. can and although there's a vaccine against it against the, the hepatitis a okay uh, uh, but the thing is it, it causes acute infection and it can resolve okay. but the b the C and the D, those ones, they can lead to the chronic infection. People can mm. end up big carriers and the chronic infection is the one that is usually causing damage to the liver. Mm. Because somebody can have the B and the C and they may recover. If the body is able to fight the infection, okay. they may recover. But if it progresses and the... When you said they may recover, is it with or without treatment? Yes, the body can be able to fight the infection. If it's, they know there's a, they're even talking about uh, all these infections because they are viral infection. Mm. There's a load of the virus, mm. you know, and affecting the cells. Sometimes the body may be able to fight the infection and it will limit the breakdown of the cells or multiplication of those virus in the body. But it may come to a time some people may not be able to fight. Not be able to fight. I said the virus multiplies in the body. Mm. So part of the screening test for people that even have those hepatitis B is for you to go and check their viral load, DNA viral load, mm. because that determines the kind of treatment that you're going to give to them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, uh, one, one thing I want to hear from you now, I would open the phone line so that people at home can also uh, call in to ask you questions. But one thing I want to hear right now is, uh, is this deadly disease curable? Is it curable? Yes, you can cure it. Because some it. people will just tell you, I'm talking about the uh, traditional way, they will just tell you that ah, when you have hepatitis, ah, you have to be very careful. There's a Yuba word, they will say, ah, it's a kwan, yes, a kwan, no, Is it curable? Medically, medically, as a medical practitioner, is it curable or something that it will just be treated with some drugs and then I want you to tell us how it is exactly because the traditional way makes this thing even more scary. They make it a lot scary. Is it curable that it will be totally gone or it is just manageable and is there you have to start taking drugs forever ah there are some uh, yes like you see <laughs> there are different scenarios okay it can be curable for some people that it is no longer they, they, they can no longer detect the virus mm. negligible low the viral load is low mm. so there's like with the, some people tell that they have been cured some people take the drugs maybe for 20 like have the hepatitis c now mm. some people there's drugs they can they use for it and it can be cured completely that's what happens hepatitis uh, c c but it's also dangerous though. Okay. But, say, hey, but sometimes the drugs if you use for a long even B2 it mm. can be cured mm. but there are some cases that some people become just chronic carriers they are carriers those ones are the ones that are spreading it they cannot be cured mm. they just have the virus in their body it may just be that maybe the load may be different from one individual to another mm. so but it can be cured hepatitis can be cured mm. yes because there are drugs that are they, they, they are antiviral drugs some people have it. I mean, so many. I don't let me mention their names because they are not. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 then there are also some uh, uh, maybe some things like interferon, all those drugs that they you know mm. the specialists know the drugs to give to them mm. so that they will monitor them. They monitor them periodically. Maybe every six, six months they need to carry out some tests, in your liver function test mm. to assess their liver whether because when these things damage the liver, mm. they it affects the liver function. It affects the the, the like I said what the, the function of the liver so. The liver helps in protein synthesis, so they measure the protein, the albumin, they measure the they measure the bilirubin level, the enzymes in the liver. There are so many enzymes that the liver helps to, you know, and uh, the liver functions. 
for. So they measure those enzymes and they will check their level whether they are raised or not. And they mm. begin to monitor these people mm. if they are a, a, a hepatitis B carrier mm. so that they will not progress to the dead uh, end stage liver disease. Mm. So you can monitor them. Some you can just be monitoring for life. For some, nice. they can be killed. They can be, they killed. Can be killed completely. Mm. Yeah. 0904-081-1061 is the studio line. Or 0904-082-1061. Our conversation today on the issues is in line with uh, the World Hepatitis Day. A day set aside to create proper awareness to everyone all over the world. This day is set to be 28th of July every year. Tomorrow, uh, which happens to be Friday, is another World Hepatitis Day. So please tell someone to tell someone that there is a deadly disease called hepatitis. It is curable in some cases, uh, but of course it can be prevented as much as we can. So doctor, uh, coming back to you, uh, when we talk about hepatitis and then we've talked about the types and the uh, uh, cures, the symptoms and all of that, I, I want to ask the question now that how costly can it be you know when you say that it is curable uh, how costly can it be and even before we talk about how costly it can be to cure this deadly disease i need to get this personally clear we have appetitis a b c d up until e now is there is it a progression that someone who has appetitis a and does not treat it on time or care for it on time will graduate to appetitis b and then from b it becomes c like a from one grade to another or it could just be anyone do they come in forms of a first before the b and no it doesn't come in forms of a first before the b okay. or c not okay. like that okay. Okay. like i said earlier i said the a and the e is getting through the frequent oral routes through food con- eating contaminated food or drinking contaminated water mm. so the guy it can be it can be cured it can resolve mm. uh, it is the b and the c that are gotten through body fluids mm. through blood and all those ones those are the ones that can progress to the chronic uh, stage, mm. uh, so it's not as if, but the, even the B that we are talking about, that this most that the, and people are concerned about, we have about 20 million people suffering from hepatitis B, even in Nigeria. Here, yeah. in Nigeria yeah, yeah, alone, yes, 20, 20 yeah. million, yes, yes. Wow. So, uh, so, uh, <laughs> well, uh, well. That's why we are creating this awareness mm. so that people can get themselves screened, mm. get tested, and once they find out that they are maybe uh, positive, they go to see their specialist for treatment. But if they are negative, then they can be prevented by vaccine. So to bring that brings me down to the prevention. Mm. So the prevention, yes. that's, you know, for uh, children can have it. So it's also one of like I mentioned earlier when I was talking there about There are no particular age to it. It's not yeah, it's it's for the affect everybody. You can affect everybody. But people that have maybe uh, their immune system are depressed, maybe they are more susceptible, you can they not be able to overcome the infection on time. Mm. So it's part of the immunization schedule in Nigeria that children, once they are born, within the twelve the first day, zero day, zero of birth, even within twelve hours of birth, they are given the hepatitis B vaccine. Mm. You call it HBV not. It's also given like the BCG to prevent tuberculosis. Yeah. Then after that, the hepatitis B vaccine is part of the compounded, maybe pentavalent vaccine that they give the children at 6 weeks, mm. at 10 weeks, and at 14 weeks. All in the bid to prevent children from coming down with the hepatitis B mm. infection mm. because it's very dangerous. Out of that 20 million, I said, about children suffer about 6 million. Hmm. Yeah, six million, under five children, about six million of them suffer from the hepatitis B infection, even in hmm. Nigeria. So that's why we are talking, we are talking about immunization hmm. to prevent it. And so children, they are they are blessed because it's part of our written immunization schedule. Hmm. They receive the vaccine to prevent the infection. But for adults, there's no provision in the immunization schedule for adults. For adults. So they need to source for how to get their own vaccine hmm. to prevent it. Also, there is there, there there are no vaccines yet for the there adult. There are vaccines for adult too. It's ah. just that it's costly. It's yeah, costly. Yes, <laughs> because we are talking about the treatment for hepatitis. The yes. treatment is also costly mm. because the drugs, the antiviral drugs that they use, they are very costly. Hmm. Uh, like HIV, where we have partners, funders, donating. I was going to ask yes. because I think even last week, uh, yeah. one. 
one of your doctors from yeah. General Hospital said uh, a treatment for, uh, I think, is it the teeth or something? I can't recall. Yeah. That it was actually free. Yeah. That they get free treatment and all of that. So I wanted mm. to ask, uh, hepatitis, are there free treatment? The, uh, the treatment is not free. So for now, unless we have bodies that are giving people free treatment, but so far, no people are going to pay, people buy your drugs. Mm. Or like HIV, where people get the drugs. Yes. Because some of the drugs that even people that have HIV are also prone to having hepatitis too. Mm. <laughs> but the, some of the drugs that people that HIV has uses it also works for hepatitis, curing hepatitis. Oh, but really? somebody that has hepatitis cannot just say, "Yeah, go and be taking HIV." No, it's not. <laughs> it's not for such people. So they need to get their own drugs. Mm. Uh, so mm. and it's very costly, several thousands of dollars. You know, for wow. treatment. Uh, wow. Yes. Wow. Oh, when you say it's very costly and you're mentioning dollars, I, is that also applicable to the general hospitals too as well? Uh, it's the drug that you are getting. Anywhere in the okay. world you are getting the drug for. Okay. It, you are going to pay. <laughs> you are going to get the... You are going to... The drug is not free. Mm. They are costly. Mm. Uh, even the vaccine too. It's, a, it's not as if... It, the vaccine, of course, they say prevention is better than cure. The yes. vaccines are cheaper. It's cheaper to prevent than to now have the disease and say you want to be curing it. Mm. So it's better to prevent than to cure. Okay, so so tell mm. me, tell me, uh, uh, there is an awareness already, and uh, people are already uh, listening to this one as well. Tomorrow, twenty eighth of July, mm. is the D Day that is set aside to uh, create proper awareness to general public. Let's come down home to uh, General Hospital Ikorudu here. Mm. Aside the fact that you are here uh, to inform everyone that there is a deadly disease that you can do away with, what other measures are in place already for tomorrow or that is currently going on i can't tell to 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 sensitize the public on this uh, deadly disease called hepatitis all right so tomorrow we are trying to create awareness we are going to have a road walk a road show wow. you know yes we distribute flyers you know and of course health talks along the way you know mm. to educate people about the virus then we're inviting people to come to the general hospital Mm. For free screening, we are doing the screening. We are testing them mm. whether they have the for virus free. for free. They, are, they should come, mm. and then for the free screening. And those who test uh, negative, mm. we we'll give them the vaccine for free too, mm. at least to celebrate the day. Yeah. For free. Yeah, that's but, for tomorrow. For tomorrow, but after okay. that, uh -huh. just <laughs> <laughs> because we need to be clear. Yes, yes, Somebody yes. might just come next week and say, "I heard it last week." Ah, when you said. no, <laughs> well, the best thing we have to get there, we have to procure it by the But for tomorrow, because we are celebrating the day when they come, mm. we give them the vaccine for free. But but it is people that are tested negative that are if you are positive, there is no need. There is nothing to prevent again, mm. so you don't need the vaccine. Mm. 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 So of course, we are sensitizing like this uh, radio show that we yeah, are sure. able to bring awareness to people. So that's how we plan to celebrate the day. Then, in our, of course, in our various waiting section, waiting areas in the hospitals, mm. you know, for every the clinic, we will go there, sensitize people, give them health talk about the virus and how they need to prevent it. Uh, so you have uh, so much to do tomorrow, yeah. uh, and we want to say well done to General Hospital Ikorodu uh, for doing so much uh, in order to create this uh, uh, world awareness on hepatitis. So. You said that tomorrow there will be a free test yes. and there will be free uh, 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 giveaway yeah. uh, that is for those that are negative yeah. uh, for the vaccine. Let's talk about testing positive now uh, because like you said, some people are not even aware that they have it. How often are we supposed to check ourselves when it comes to tests? For like HIV, I know they used to say check yourself maybe some months. When it has to do with the teeth, there are some times you check. But for hepatitis, are there a particular time like check yourself every three, three months or every two, two years or every one week or every day? Are there, are there, are there time no. durations to that? So it's good to test. Once you test, it's good to and you are negative. It's good to get the vaccine for prevention. Mm. And the vaccine is usually given. We have three doses. We give one at first contact, mm. one at one month, then mm. another at six months. You mm. know, the normal regimen. Because there are different regimens. And some have the accelerated regimen. Yes, maybe somebody wants to travel, they accelerate the rate mm. at which they give the person, they vaccinate the person. But the normal regimen is three doses at zero months, first contact at one month, then at six months. So we are going to make provision for vaccination of such people. Okay. Uh -huh. So we get their numbers, we call them, you know, to come and we give them vaccine card mm. so that they you know they will know they keep up with the appointment so that they are completely vaccinated. And once they are completely vaccinated, mm. they are vaccinated for life. They are not susceptible to having hepatitis again. Wow. So there's no need to be going and be doing uh, screening like you are saying mm, yeah, you're mm, checking yourself mm, every two mm, months, every three uh, mm. there's nothing like that. 
that once you are completely vaccinated, you are vaccinated for life. Mm. You are protected. Mm. So there's no need to be checking whether you have hepatitis or not. Either. So if you're vaccinated once, you're good. Yes. Because complete I, I, vaccination. Complete vaccination. Yes. I was going to ask that: Is it even advisable for people to just decide and say, "Okay, I want to get my own vaccinations, and of course, I run this uh, uh, for myself." Because you're saying tomorrow is going to be for free. Yeah. But there are other days that are not free. Yeah, and not people, come, people walk into the hospital, mm. they open car, they say, I want to get tested. Once they get tested mm. and they are negative, they start, they buy their vaccine and we give them. Okay, so, so aside say, tomorrow, tomorrow, people yes. could come, oh, yes, do their test. And get the if you're negative, you, you give, buy your vaccines. Yes. And then, but if you're positive, then you, you begin get, treatment. You go to your treatment with your doctor. Uh, when okay. you talk about this hepatitis, either A, B, down to E, mm. and then you're treated and you are cured of this disease mm. called hepatitis. Mm. Is that to say that the person will not have hepatitis again? My question is simple. If you're cured, you had it, but you were cured, does that mean you can never have it again? Just hmm. like when you have your vaccine, uh, when uh, you're negative you're, and you you're cannot have... Is, uh, is that same for positive persons uh, too? If possible that the person may not have it again, but if the immune system is suppressed, mm. it can be reactivated. Okay. The, the, so it means that the person has to live well so that the person will not get infected infected there as in getting the reactivation of that virus again mm. or be infected again mm. but the thing is once you have uh, you have hepatitis or maybe you are cured you mm. may be cured for life mm. but it, it depends on your immune system if your immune system is poor to the immune if system is poor the person the virus can be reactivated you can be infected again mm. but it's people that they have the vaccine mm. i'm sure that uh, it's not likely that they will <laughs> get infected because they have been vaccinated so before you leave i want you to tell us again uh the things we need to do as uh, humans who do not want to have this deadly disease called hepatitis it's an awareness mm -hmm. and this is the best time for you to preach that gospel to everyone listening mm -hmm. out there what are the things we are supposed to do in order not to have this deadly disease called hepatitis well first thing is to make sure that you stay healthy Mm -hmm. Maintain good hygiene, especially for the A and the E. You know, good world eating hygiene, water hygiene. And for the B, make sure you stay protected. You know, use condom for people that have maybe multiple sexual partner. Mm -hmm. You stay, you can be stay, be faithful to your partner. Once you and your partner, you know that you are negative. Stay mm -hmm. faithful to your partner. Then, of course, avoid the use of sharing instrument, sharp instrument, okay. blade, scissors. Uh, needles and people that enjoy drugs don't share needles don't reuse needles mm. you know then of course people that uh, use maybe clippers all those instruments that mm. they cannot do, do without make sure you sterilize them properly mm. after it use before you use for another person mm. of course if you want to you are sick in the hospital they say want to give blood ensure that the blood that they are giving you is properly screened okay. um, for pregnant women too pregnant mm. women once they are pregnant it's part of the test that they are supposed to do anyway it's uh, compulsory they're supposed uh, to test for hepatitis okay. because you don't want them to infect their child True. so pregnant women should get tested and of course if they are positive they institute treatment for them if they are mm. negative of course of course when they have their child they vaccinate them mm. uh, and then of course for organ donation to ensure that you don't take organ from people that are ensure the organs are screened or not from mm. people that are infected so those are the ways to prevent hepatitis mm. staying healthy mm. yeah Thank you so very yeah. much for your time again on the issues today. This is how far we would have it on the issues uh, before we call it a day. Uh, doctor, tomorrow, I can picture tomorrow as a very big day. I can picture the crowd. I can picture the people that will come around because naturally, uh, the Ikorudu General Hospital, we know, is a crowded place uh, with a lot of people. And you doctors are doing well. Uh, every one of you over there, you're doing uh, well in attending to patients. But not everybody will be chance to come tomorrow for this test either positive or negative now what would your advice be to people out there now in this context of uh, not being able to test themselves to know where they actually belong to what would your advice be for them anytime there are chance you should come to the hospital you could do you know get your card and request that you want to get tested actually somebody yesterday came to the clinic was saying i, I tested somewhere they for me i was doing the job screening they said i was positive so i'm not sure i want to test again so mm. i was okay yeah go and get tested again at least this is an hospital now mm -hmm. so let people come and get themselves tested mm. and once you get tested we know that once you are negative try and plan 
to get vaccinated okay. because that's the real don't deal. just feel comfortable uh, that yeah, you're negative you yeah, don't plan to get vaccinated so mm. that you can prevent yourself from getting infected and if you have somebody that's around you that is positive mm. the more you should get yourself tested and get vaccinated mm. so that you prevent yourself from having infection okay uh you've heard that uh, and uh, uh, when we talk about uh, 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 people coming get themselves checked even after uh even after tomorrow and then uh, maybe okay maybe let's take a call let's take a call please let's not ignore the calls hello to you hello good morning yes good morning your name Friday, Friday. Friday, calling from where? Ah, from Ecuador. Okay, Friday, go ahead. Uh, I have three questions to ask. You have three questions or few questions? Three. Three, wonderful. Go ahead, Friday. Hello, which one? Hello, Friday. Hello, Friday, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Please go ahead. <laughs> Um, they are talking about from HIV. That's okay, Friday. Friday. You know what you do? Maybe you should just call us back before we end the show. We have just few more minutes. I can barely hear you from this end. I can barely hear you. If you can still meet up with time, then it is fine. Uh, you know, I got scared when he said he asked three questions. I'm like, okay, uh, three questions. So now, for people who would uh, uh, come get vaccinated even after tomorrow and they have to pay for it and those that are, are found themselves uh, are positive i know there is always what we call uh, 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 discrimination and all of that in most cases what would your advice be to people that are around people who knows that ah this brother this sister has hepatitis what would you have to say to people like that uh, well they should not be stigmatized you should not discriminate against people because it's not something that you just by uh, looking at somebody or touching somebody mm. or, uh, or shaking hands with somebody that you can get infected mm. so don't discriminate against them you know because so that it make more people to come out so mm. that we can limit the spread mm. of the hepatitis infection so people should embrace people if you have somebody even having the infection it's not the end of life mm -hmm. you know there are ways which can you know people can live long prolong their lives drugs to use drugs mm. to protect the liver so it's not something that because you say it is not deadly like hiv then you should not ah don't let me mm. move near them no no close. so don't discriminate don't stigmatize people that have it mm. you're gonna have a club that you have people you know you educate them you know some people once they tell them that you're positive they feel that ah, that's the end of life oh, i'm going to die <laughs> okay so let's take let's take this life. call hello mm -hmm. uh, this is friday okay mm -hmm. friday i can hear you now Thank you. Ah, uh, I have three questions after. Okay, please do that quickly. Thank you. I uh, from hepatitis and HIV. You're asking, are they the same hepatitis and HIV? Is that the question? Exactly. No, they are not. That has been clear. They are not the same. No, I said which one kills faster? Faster. Okay, which one kills faster? Okay, maybe the doctor will answer to that. Uh, then okay. the second question, yes, please. Is it possible not to have it? Can you be careful? Can you be 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 to be to know yourself better that you can't have that kind of thing? And the third one is what does the what does drink drinking water early in the morning does it have any to do with hepatitis. That is the question. Okay, thank you, Friday. The doctor was saying to I'll start with questions. the last question. Yes. Drinking water in the morning does not have anything to do with hepatitis. Mm. <laughs> that one is, that's not what the mode of transmission of the of the of the virus. Mm. The second question that you not get it, but the first one about HIV and yes. hepatitis. Yes. <laughs> It has been said that even sometimes hepatitis may be more deadlier than HIV. It looks as if HIV does not uh, kill. Mm. But you know you say HIV can kill every... Uh, hepatitis can kill every 30, 30 seconds. seconds. That's, that's alone. Not the, uh, that's, not <laughs> the, that's not the statistics for HIV. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that means people have to come out and get more tested. You know, mm. some people just say that HIV is the only severe infection. That mm. is, uh, dangerous. Uh, though it's not as if hepatitis cannot be killed. But some people say it can be more fulminant, more dangerous than even HIV. Mm. Because it affects the liver, which is which, uh, which performs a very major function in the body. That is a one life, one liver. Mm. So both are both are not good. 
but hepatitis may be more dangerous if it progresses to the chronic stage because it affects the liver. At least for the fact that it kills every 30 seconds. Yes, that yes. alone, that alone would tell. Uh, mm -hmm. That is for the first question. The third one you've answered that. The second question, I think what he's saying is how can someone be very careful and not be affected, infected with the uh, hepatitis? And I think you've uh, yes. also done justice to that. But you can uh, just briefly speak uh, on that. Uh, well, try to be careful. Be, uh, uh, ensure that you protect yourself. Don't share sharp instruments with others. Mm -hmm. Ensure that you screen blood before you take it. Ensure that you use condom, protect yourself, be faithful to your partners. All those ways that we permit us that we will say that you get HIV from. Try and avoid sharing, you know, missing of blood or sharing all those things. Uh, above all, is to prevent it. For now, uh, we're calling it a day. Special thanks to our guest today, Dr. Yetunde Odusolu, Public Health Physician, General Hospital, Ikorodu. My name remains the same, Okoyemi Adebambo, urging you to please stay safe and, of course, stay protected. God bless you. Thank you.